Hey there, Cameron with CButterStack. Have you ever wanted to just take a USB drive, put Windows on it, and take it wherever you go, use it on any computer you want? Well, Microsoft had that same vision. Unfortunately, they only provided the option in a lot of their enterprise editions of the software. Um, and even then, Microsoft has discontinued developing the feature as of 2019. But there's still one company that's providing a solution to do the same thing and tap into those Windows components. Uh, and it really can give you a little more flexibility in how you use your computers. Today I'll be looking at that piece of software. It's called Ease US OS To Go. Not only does it let you create your own Windows To Go drive, but it lets you create it from Home, Pro, or even Windows 11. And also, rather than having to use a certified USB drive, uh, you can actually use any USB drive you want. However, you're obviously, it's going to be in your best interest to use a very fast USB drive to load your software and applications while you're running Windows off of that drive. I decided to put OS to go through its paces and show my viewers what I found. First, I'll show you how it works, and then at the end of the video, we'll talk about who could actually use this and why it might it be useful to you. Because there's a lot of use cases uh, for both businesses and person, personal use uh, that you may not have thought of that uh, this software enables you to do. So there's a few things to keep in mind when you first get started with this. Uh, the first thing is, when you get the software, you might be tempted to install it just anywhere. But the fact of the matter is, you need to install and activate it on the computer you're going to be creating the drive from. Um, because part of the creation of the drive is taking the computer that the software is installed on and literally cloning it to the drive here. So you want to make sure that you install that software where you want to actually be using it to make your initial uh, creation. The process works by literally copying everything from that source drive to the USB drive, so keep that in mind. Any files, applications, programs, uh, documents will all get moved, so just be sure you know that you understand what, what it's going to be doing here. Because it's going to be copying everything over to the drive from the source drive, if you have, say, a 256 gigabyte uh, source drive, you can't use a 128 gigabyte thumb drive. Uh, so you need to be sure that you're using a thumb drive that's large enough to accept uh, all the data that's already on the drive. So if you have a one terabyte uh, system that's filled with, with applications, you need at least a one terabyte thumb drive or flash drive in order to make this happen. So just keep that in mind. Those are my two tips for getting started. But let's go ahead and look at the software and how it works and how you can uh, basically clone your existing system over to the thumb drive. Okay, so let's go ahead and install the software. Uh, despite the nature of what it's doing, which might be fairly complicated, uh, it's actually a pretty easy install and pretty easy to understand. There's not a whole lot of options that you need to configure to make this work. Installation's easy. Uh, go ahead and activate it with your code. It will ask you for that. I've skipped that, that portion. But here you can just choose uh, the device you want to use. it, And it's going to delete all the data on your selected disk, so make sure that you're aware of that. And you can see that while we are using a one terabyte source drive, because the data is not bigger than one terabyte, it's actually small enough amount of data that it will fit on a USB drive that's a 256. And I've checked that it is an SSD that will, uh, I'm not, I don't know exactly what that does, but uh, <laughs> I'm assuming it has something to do with uh, setting the drive as portable or not. Um, so there may be some flags on the device, uh, whether it's an SSD or not. But uh, that aside, that's, that's literally it. You choose your source, choose your destination, and you're on your way. So let's uh, let this finish up, and then we'll continue to see what this is all about. Okay, so it finishes. It, it how, Depending on how much data and how quick your drives are is how long this is going to take. In my case, it took about 13 minutes to create this drive. 
Now uh, from here, uh, it just kind of does a little bit of finishing, probably clear some temporary files, and then all that's left to do is boot from that USB drive. Okay, so once you've created your USB flash drive, uh, you have to know how to boot from it. Uh, and if you're not familiar with BIOS settings, one of the easiest things to do is maybe uh, use Windows and go into the system settings. And in the recovery section, there's an option called advanced startup. And if you go into advanced startup, there is a button there that lets you uh, boot from a USB drive uh, within that framework. Uh, that's just if you don't know the key combination to make it boot from a USB drive when you're booting up. Sometimes it's F11. Sometimes you can just hit delete to go to the BIOS and then choose. Um, it really just depends on what system you're working with. Now when you first boot off the USB, you may be confused and think you actually booted right into your same Windows environment that you were just in because it looks exactly the same down to the files that are on the desktop. Um, the best way to know is to go into Windows Explorer and look at the drives and see, oh, am I running off of, uh, does my Windows C drive look like my thumb drive or does it look like my normal uh, SSD or hard drive? So uh, that's one way to tell. And what I would recommend is once you have this, this different environment that's now running off the flash drive that looks exactly the same, change the background. Um, that way... If your system suddenly reboots or, or you reboot after you've installed a piece of software um, and then it accidentally goes into uh, maybe your original drive to boot, uh, now you're running two different instances. So um, you, have to, you have to really be aware of what the system is doing. So I ran into a few problems uh, with my thumb drive uh, booting into Windows. Uh, on every single device I tested, uh, I tried it on a laptop and I tried it on a Surface Go and uh, those all worked fine uh, when you're booting to that same laptop. So if it's the exact same hardware, it seems to work perfectly. Um, where I did run into some issues was when I took uh, the thumb drive from a gaming laptop and then put it into a different uh, computer with different systems. Uh, sometimes it worked, sometimes it didn't, uh, unfortunately. And what I realized is I was I had built my USB drive on a very custom uh, gaming laptop and it was looking for some of these devices and things. It wasn't finding them. Uh, so it was already configured to do some special um, setup in Windows for the hardware that was on that device. So when you plugged it into a different machine it just said I don't understand what's happening this is not the hardware I'm supposed to be running on so um, what I then did was use a more basic machine and and a fresh copy of Windows so I would have a clean uh, USB drive that I could try in different places and that seemed to work a lot better uh, but just keep in mind uh, there could be some compatibility issues when you do this um, and uh, actually I actually don't blame the software maker because it's kind of just a Windows thing. It's a, it's a limitation of Windows to go. Um, you just have to work around those device complications. So um, let's talk about where this is super useful because uh, there's some use cases for this that are really cool uh, for you know individuals, uh, personal people, or in a certain work environment. So if you are in a work environment uh, that has lots of the same type of machines, uh, this is really good because you can have your own setups, your own settings, your own software, and then you just go around and plug your USB and boot off of it at whatever workstation you might be working on at that given moment. And so that works really well in a work environment that has a lot of the same hardware and probably has some sort of network drive so you're working with files that you can share and then they're available uh, works well with the cloud um, so for work devices I would say uh, that's the use case on a personal level there's a lot of reasons that you might want to do this uh, for one it actually is a really good way to test new software if you a lot of people will roll a virtual machine if they're installing a new piece of software to test and make sure it's safe and see what it's doing um, with this, you can actually 
basically clone your your running work environment, or sorry, personal computing environment, put it on the USB, and then uh, rather than you know muck up your your C drive of your regular hard drive, you can boot off the thumb drive, install the program, see if they work for you, and uh, or maybe you know you realize, hey, this is kind of malware. I don't like this, or I'd rather not. Then you don't. You all you have to do is just go back to booting from your original computer, and you're back to square one. It's almost like a a rollback, um, a shadow copy almost, uh, but just doing it a little bit different method. Another reason that you might want to do this is maybe. Maybe you are running off of a work PC and um, <clears throat> you do a lot of, you want to have two kind of separate looking environments. Maybe you want to keep all your uh, work related software on your normal drive, but then when you want to load up a bunch of games or have a different background or have different file sets that's uh, more geared towards like personal uh, you can boot off of a thumb drive and use that same install environment. But then, when you, whenever the thumb drive's not in, you're, you're using it as a work machine. And then, when you boot off of the thumb drive, you now have all your games, things installed, um, and you're able to kind of partition. I, I mean, this it's very similar to if you just created two partitions on your C drive and booted to one or the other. However, that can be a little complicated to set up for people initially, and using the OS to go software and putting on a thumb drive and then just booting off the thumb drive is actually pretty easy. Uh, it's, it's actually, I mean, it's, it's basically a two click thing <laughs> that would get you set up. And at the same time, it gives you security because if you don't want anyone to see what programs, applications, and documents you're running on this thumb drive at any given time, um, you just take that and Put it somewhere else, and no one's the wiser. You don't. You have a completely different set of applications on your laptop or computer, and then you boot off of this, and you got a completely different environment um, and setup that you're using off of this. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that look at the Ease US OS to go. Uh, it lets you leverage Windows to go pretty easily. It brings it to the masses rather than requiring an enterprise uh, version of Windows. And it's pretty cool. You can do some really neat things with it. Um, I'm really happy to be able to offer a 50% discount uh, in a link in the description on this video. You can get the lifetime subscription to os to go um, by following that link and uh, take a look at it. Hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, love to hear your comments and your experiences uh, trying to use this in the comment section. So uh, anyways, thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.